we need to talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the other element other than aperture which controls how much light is actually let into the camera. Shutter speed actually controls how long it is let into the camera for rather than how much. And that's why shutter speed is actually slightly the wrong name for it. We talk about shutter speed, but it's not a speed. It's not measured in quickness or anything like that. It is just time. It's how long the camera is open for. So most of the shutter speeds that you'll see are fractions of a second. So 125 is 1 125th of a second, 400 1/400th of a second, 4000 1/4000th of a second. When we get to 1 second, we suddenly see little speech marks just after the numbers and that shows we're working in whole seconds. We're talking 1, 5, 10. Most cameras will allow us to stay open for 30 seconds as a maximum as an automatic setting but there's often either a bulb or a timer setting that allows us to stay open as long as we need to. So that's the practical aspect of it. It is literally just how long the camera is open for. But there's a creative aspect of it as well. And as long as the camera is open, any motion that happens within the camera's field of view is captured, is recorded. So the faster the shutter speed, the, the closer it is to zero essentially, the, the more frozen that motion will be. So one four thousandth of a second will capture incredibly frozen detail. So if you've got a balloon popping or if you've got somebody running or somebody jumping or a car going by, it will freeze it still. If we have a slower shutter speed, so maybe a tenth of a second, a twentieth of a second, you'll get motion in that picture. You'll see movement. You can get these amazing milky water waterfalls where you're leaving it open for two or three seconds at a time and really getting that motion of the water. And so this is the creative aspect of it. Do you want something that's going to be completely frozen or do you want something that's going to show the motion? The problem is that motion works in two ways. Although it will capture the motion that happens in front of the camera, it will also capture the motion of the camera. So there's something called the reciprocal rule which looks at how long lens is compared to how long you should leave the shutter open for. The general rule of thumb is that your shutter speed should always be one over the length of the lens which means that if it's a wide angle lens, because you're capturing a much wider field of view and motion will be much harder to detect, you can leave it open for much more time. If you've got a very long lens on there, a telephoto, you're zoomed right in, even the smallest motion will be picked up, so you need to use a much higher shutter speed. So typically if you're using a telephoto lens of maybe 300 millimeters, you need to make sure that you're using a shutter speed that is above one three hundredth of a second. With vibration reduction, with uh, optical stabilization, these rules become a little bit more flexible and then there's also the issue that most cameras now are not necessarily using, that the lens length is not directly correspondent to what we would use on a 35mm film camera. So there's a little bit of flexibility in there. What I would say is try it, play with it, see what you can actually get sharp handheld. But if you're putting the camera on a tripod, we know the camera is not going to move, so we can have a much longer shutter speed. If we're hand holding, we can use a much higher shutter speed. So if the camera is shaking, you will see these pictures that just aren't quite sharp. So if you're seeing that, you need to increase your shutter speed. Equally, if you want to be able to capture that idea of motion, you can actually use that camera motion and that camera blur to your advantage. There's a technique called panning where particularly with action sports, most sports uses it a lot. Uh, in these examples I've used uh, a combination of motorsports and wakeboarding, which seems to be my new favorite thing. And you can see that by following the subject with a slower shutter speed, as long as you're following it at the same speed that the subject is moving, you can create, capture the subject still, but blur the background and it really gives a nice sense of movement. So that's the biggest thing about shutter speed. The longer the shutter speed's open, the more motion you'll capture. The higher the shutter speed, the more frozen things will be. And that's where you need to think about what you want to achieve in your photograph. So have a play with it, see what you can achieve. I'd say it's a really good project would be to try capture the same subject at multiple different shutter speeds and see what you prefer. So have a play. Uh, remember this is number two of 20 videos that I'm gonna be releasing 
about photography, videography and generally just creating great images. So remember to subscribe so that you're kept up to date with everything that I'm releasing. Thank you.